Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris Effects, and I'm back again with another tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about a couple of my go-to effects inside of Boris Sapphire. To be honest, this tutorial was hard to do because it's really hard to narrow down all of the effects I use inside this package to really show you one or two great ones. But I'm going to be honest with you, the two that I've picked are two that I utilize in just about every project that I work on. And I want to talk about my favorite, my go-to effect, and for me, really one of the creams of the crop inside of Bora Sapphire, and that's the glow effect. I'm going to be honest with you, there's 10 categories inside of Bora Sapphire, and I really spend most of my time hanging out in one category, and that is the lighting category. There's so many great effects in here, including glare and glint and lens flare, which we're going to be talking about in its own dedicated lesson, because I want to focus on how cool those flares are, plus the flare builder tool. But right now, I want to talk about probably my go-to effect in any plugin package, and that's S-Glow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the S-Glow effect, and I'm going to drag it and drop it down here onto our title, not onto our shot, but onto our title. If you're not familiar with Sapphire, one thing that's important for me to point out is that unlike the standard effects inside of Media Composer, we can take Sapphire effects and apply them to elements like titles or matte keys in our timeline very easily by dragging and dropping the effect onto the clip, then simply navigating over to the effect editor and selecting apply to title or key. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick a color that's a little bit more appropriate for the beach. Let's pick this orange color right here. Now you'll see that glow is pretty in our face. It's pretty bright. I'm just going to brighten it up just a little bit more. But what I'm going to do is that once I brighten it up, I'm just going to bring the width down a little bit. And you'll see that literally in a matter of seconds, we've created a very cool glow. Now I'll be honest with you, there's a whole bunch of other effects out there that can create a glow effect, but none quite like Sapphire. Now what do I mean by that? Well, I'm just going to show you one cool feature inside of the glow effect. I'm just going to scroll right down to the bottom of the effects editor to the atmosphere parameter. This is one that I love because in most cases, people are accustomed to glow effects just really sitting there and not doing anything unless you animate them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the atmosphere amplitude. I'm just gonna ramp that up just a little bit. And if you notice, the glow is gonna get a little bit on the grungy side. Now, why is that? Well, you'll notice that now we have some glow happening here, but we don't have a glow happening here because what's happened is that this glow has almost taken on a life of itself. Now again, I haven't had to add any keyframes or anything like that, just a simple adjustment to the atmosphere amplitude and we're all set to go. Now I wanna show you another cool feature inside of the glow effect and this is a feature that's available across most of the parameters inside of Bora Sapphire and that is the integration of Mocha. Now we talked about Mocha in its own specific lesson but I wanna show you another cool feature in this tutorial one that you might not necessarily be thinking of right away. What we're gonna do is head back up to the top of the effects editor, and I'm gonna to come to edit Mocha. Now what we're going to do once Mocha opens is we're just gonna zoom back just a little bit here, and I'm just gonna create an X spline that's gonna look something like this. There we go, okay? Now I wanna make sure it's lined up as good as it can be lined up, just that it's a little bit even, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this moving across our text. Now you'll notice a keyframe has been added right here. What I'm gonna do is just remove that keyframe and we're gonna start somewhere about here. I don't wanna start right at the beginning of the shot. We're just gonna place our mask right about there, okay? And we're gonna come down again, not quite to the end. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that mask. We're just gonna drag it all the way across our text to right about there. So what we've basically created is just this little movement of this mask across our text. Now once I've done that, I'm gonna quit out of Mocha, I'm gonna say save, and once we're back in Media Composer, you're gonna notice that the glow is now isolated only over top of one part of our title. Now what I wanna do is just twirl down Mocha for one second, I wanna come down and just show Mocha only. You'll see there's the mask that we created inside of Mocha that we hand animated in literally about two seconds. But what this is doing is creating a mask for our title, I'm just gonna turn off the show mocha only option. And what we now have the ability to do is just to come back just a little bit. And I'm just gonna blur the mocha effect just so that it's not so much of a hard effect. And essentially what we've just created is a glow that moves over top of our text, literally in a matter of seconds. I gotta tell you this glow effect, again, 
I love it not just because it's so simple to use, but because there's so many great additional parameters in there unique to S-Glow, and the integration of Mocha just takes that effect to the next level. All right, let's talk about another effect that I use all the time, and that's S underscore shake. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna come to our effects editor. I'm just gonna type in S underscore shake. There's our shake effect, and I'm gonna drag that and drop that onto our footage. Now, one thing that happens with a lot of effects inside of effects packages is that people take the effect, they drag it and drop it on, they see the default parameters, and in a lot of cases, they'll just move past it because they think, oh, you know what, it's not quite what I'm looking for. You know, maybe it just seems a little bit complicated to get in and create what we want. And S shake can be one of those effects. You'll notice that when I drop it on, it almost looks like we have an earthquake happening here. And that's okay, I don't necessarily mind the earthquake because we're gonna get in and we're gonna take this and just slow it right down to give this camera, and what I'm gonna do is just step into effects mode for a second and just bypass the effect. You'll see that we have a very steady camera here, but what I'd like to do is just to give it a little bit of a shake, give it a little bit more realism in our shot, and that's really what Sapphire is all about. It's about taking these effects and adding just extra layers of realism to your footage to again, take them to the next level. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our amplitude and we're gonna ramp that way down. I'm just gonna deselect bypass effect. Let's put this down somewhere at about 0.2. Now you'll notice that as soon as I do that and I come back and I drag through, we still get a little bit of a shake back and forth that's a little bit much. And it's because our frequency is set way too high. Let's set our frequency to be somewhere around two. I'm just gonna step out of effects mode for a second. And you'll now see that what we have is a lot calmer effect. Now, you're gonna notice something that I wanna point out here down towards the bottom of the shot. You're gonna notice that it actually mirrors the shot right when it gets down to the point where what's actually happening is that the frame is moving up above the bottom of our actual frame and we don't wanna have a black bar appearing there. So you'll see that we actually get the image doubled up. So how do we get in and how do we fix that? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back into effects mode and I'm simply gonna navigate down to the Z distance. I'm gonna take the Z distance and we're just gonna zoom in just a little bit to about there. And what we now have is we now have a shake effect that's just gonna give a very, very subtle camera shake to our footage that's gonna give it a little bit more realism in our timeline. For me, the biggest problem with this tutorial was narrowing the effects down to just two to show you, but I encourage you to download the free demo of Boris Sapphire so that you can check out all of the effects inside of the package so you can see how great they are for yourself. And if you want to find more videos like this one to help take your compositing and visual effects work to the next level, you can check them out at borseffects.com.